Barakato, hello, join a club listeners. So this is a European Society of Endodontology position statement on root resorption. It was published on the 21st of March of this year, 2023, by Prof. Shannon Patel in cooperation with well known authors such as Weger and Gambarini. It is based on the best current clinical and scientific evidence as well as expertise of the committee. The review provided authoritative information on the etiology, clinical, and radiographic presentation and recommendations for the management of root resorption for each type. Starting with the internal resorption, they classified them as transient or progressive. The odontoclastic resorption process may be transient and self-limiting, particularly during the initial phases of the intraalveolar root fracture healing, referred to as internal surface or internal tunnel resorption, as reported by Andreessen in 1988. The internal surface resorption, as shown here in this illustration, appears as a circular radiolucent area at the intersection of the root canal and fracture line due to the rounding of the fracture edges and usually self-limiting, while the internal tunnel tunneling resorption leaves the canal wall intact and burrow behind the predentine layer of the walls. Most of the internal resorptions are progressive, can be divided to as inflammatory or replacement. The inflammatory consists of granulation tissue only and usually presents with an oval or circular shaped radiolucency or what we call ballooning of the root canal outline, whereas the replacement consists of a combination of granulation tissue and metaplastic bone-like heart tissue. And the radiographically presents as an irregularly shaped radiolucency with mottled or cloudy appearance with a partially unclear outline. The key recommendation in this um, a position statement for the transient type to do a periodic review. It requires annual clinical uh, assessment such as pulp sensitivity testing, etc., and radiographic monitoring to ensure early detection of possible complications. And for the progressive type, the treatment aims to disinfect the root canal system and eliminate the vital epical pulp tissue, which is sustaining the internal resorption. And the treatment option include root canal treatment with or without internal repair of any perforation, or root canal treatment with surgical repair of any perforation and extraction in irreparable cases. For the external surface resorption, as we know that it's commonly caused by pressure exerted by trauma, luxation injuries, orthodontic treatment, adjacent impacted teeth, cysts or tumors, and there is no classic radiographic appearance, but it may be presented as asymmetrical loss of external root surface adjacent to the source of pressure, such as impacted uh, tooth or, or cyst or tumor. It could be minor and very detectable, and a perforation may be observed in advanced cases. Flattening or blunting of the root apices can be observed, and the affected tooth may be relatively shorter than the neighboring. The treatment objective here is to manage the excessive pressure that is causing the root resorption. For the external cervical resorption, as we all know, it's of a poorly understood etiology, orthodontic treatment, and history of trauma were the most commonly associated factor. The hypoxia was even uh, recently proposed as a contributory factor by Maverdi in 2019. However, to date, all suggested theological factors were considered only as predisposing or associated factor rather than causative. And the management of these cases depend on the nature, extent, size of the portal of entry and accessibility to the lesion uh, with the several treatment options as we can see here. We could do external repair only or with root canal treatment, internal repair, repair with root canal treatment or intentional replantation, decoronation, periodic review or extraction. All of these options are still experimental and the outcome is often short to medium term. And the prognosis is better with smaller and more accessible um, uh, cervical resorption to treatment. And the external repair has a better prognosis than the internal repair. For the external inflammatory resorption, the majority of the cases do not show any clinical signs. Therefore, it's uh, mostly detected radiographically as an incidental finding. And the treatment uh, of this type of resorption uh, focus on the elimination of the pulp space infection, include root canal treatment for the treatable cases and extraction for the irreparable cases. And for the external replacement resorption, it's commonly associated with uh, severe trauma that can be observed following a vagina or intrusion. It presents uh, with lack of physiological mobility and high-pitched or metallic sound on percussion. The treatment is influenced by the nature of the resorption, the growth status of the patient, and involves a multidisciplinary approach. For the infra-occluded uh, teeth, a composite buildup is recommended, 
and annual periodic review in cases of uh, uh, keeping the tooth or if it will be prosthetically replaced a uh, multidisciplinary approach is more likely uh, to be performed and for the transient epical breakdown it's an expansion of the apical PDL in healthy teeth with fully developed roots or closed or half closed apices associated with recently with recent history of trauma. It's been speculated that it is a repair process following the trauma where the injured tissue is removed and replaced with normal tissue after some time. Clinically, it may present mild tooth discoloration and delayed or no response to pulp sensibility testing, which will normally resolve within a year. Uh, the diagnostic feature of the transient apical breakdown are widening of the PDL space and blurry appearance or loss of the apical uh, lamina, lamina dura. The radiographic appearance may return to normal state within one year as reported by Andreessen in 1986. And these cases require only periodic review with annual clinical and radiographic monitoring. To sum this up, we can say that it is important for the clinician to appreciate the different forms of resorption in order to recognize and differentiate between them. For this reason, it's a prequisity to know the tissues involved and to understand their pathology and role of infection. Uh, systematic clinical and radiographic examination is of another importance to ensure the appropriate management of the resorption. And finally, increasingly, CBCT improves the diagnosis and aid in the management uh, by providing an essential three-dimensional information about the nature of the resorption, the extent of it, and the degree of circumferential spread and proximity of the root canal. Hope you have a great day. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.